So let's look at the following example in which we're going to deal with calorimetry. Suppose a 300 gram piece of iron is placed into an aluminum calorimeter that contains glycerin at 11 degrees Celsius. So initially before we place the iron into our calorimeter, the temperature of the glycerin and the temperature of the aluminum cup is 11 degrees Celsius. Now, after some time, the observed temperature, the final temperature of our system is 39 degrees Celsius. So after we place our iron, the temperature of the glycerin, the aluminum and the iron is 39 degrees Celsius. If the initial temperature of the iron before we place it into our calorimeter was 185 degrees Celsius, calculate the specific heat of glycerin assuming that we know the specific heat of iron, we know the specific heat of aluminum, we know the mass of the aluminum cup is 0.1 kilograms and the mass of the glycerin inside the cup is 0.26 kilograms. So let's begin by looking at our two diagrams. So before we place the iron into our calorimeter, we heat the iron to a temperature of 185 degrees Celsius. Then we take this and we place it into our calorimeter. Now before we place it into our calorimeter, the temperature of the aluminum cup and the glycerin is 11 degrees Celsius. After we place it into our calorimeter and we weight, the temperature equalizes at 39 degrees Celsius. So that implies the temperature of the iron, aluminum and the glycerin is 39 degrees Celsius. So notice that the temperature of the iron decreased and that means energy was transferred out of the iron and that energy went into the glycerin and the aluminum because the temperature of both of these substances increased. So because we have the conservation of energy, because we are assuming no energy left our system, that implies that the energy that was lost by the iron is equal to the sum of the energy that was gained by the glycerin and the energy that was gained by the aluminum. So we know that the equation for the heat loss or energy loss, Q, is equal to the product of the mass of the substance, the specific heat, and the change in temperature. So that means the energy lost by the iron is equal to Mi, the mass of iron, multiplied by Ci, the specific heat of iron, multiplied by change in temperature that the iron experiences. And this is equal to the energy gained by the glycerin glycerin, the mass of the glycerin multiplied by the specific heat of glycerin, so this is what we're looking for, multiplied by the change in temperature that the glycerin experiences, plus the energy gained by the aluminum, the mass of the aluminum multiplied by specific heat of aluminum multiplied by change in temperature of our aluminum. So we solve for this quantity because this is what we're looking for and we get the following result. We simply take this, bring it to the left side and divide both sides by mg times change in T and that's exactly what we're left with. Now we know what all these quantities are so we plug them in. So we get the mass of the iron is 0.3 kilograms, the specific heat of iron is 450 and the change in temperature of iron is 185 minus 39. Now, the mass of the aluminum is 0.1 kilograms, the specific heat of aluminum is 900 joules per kilogram times Celsius, and the change in temperature of the aluminum is 39 minus 11 degrees Celsius. Now, the bottom is, well, it's the mass of the glycerin, which is 0.26 kilograms multiplied by the change in temperature. So 39 degrees Celsius minus 11 degrees Celsius. We plug that into our calculator and we see that the specific heat of glycerin is 2,361 joules per kilogram times Celsius. So, once again, we were able to use the concept of calorimetry to find, to calculate the specific heat of a certain substance knowing the specific heats of other substances.